In this video of our series, Michigan State Capital Sports Connection, we will pay tribute to the late, great Charles Thornhill. Charlie Thornhill was a Sergeant of Arms for the Michigan State Senate from 1993 to 2006. The role of a Sergeant of Arms is to act as security and enforcing order in the legislative chambers, as well as committee meetings. Sergeant of Arms are generally drawn from a law enforcement background as they act in the capacity as certified officers of the law. But years before working in the Michigan State Senate, Charlie Thornhill played college football with the Michigan State Spartans. Charlie was one of the school's all-time greatest players, and he played for what is still considered today as the school's greatest football team, winning back-to-back -back Big Ten and National Championships in 1965 and 1966. Charlie was born in 1944 in Roanoke, Virginia, the state's largest railroad hub and manufacturing center. He attended Lucy Addison High School, where he played as a running back for the high school football team. He had three consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, helping his school to win three straight state championships from 1960 to 1962. In his senior year, he was honored by the city's Renault Touchdown Club for being the best running back of the year, the first African-American student to receive this award. Charlie did not go on to play college football for any of the major Southern universities for this was the time of Southern states practicing school segregation. Charlie was recruited by many Northern schools and eventually chose Michigan State University. The Michigan State Spartans had been the newest members of the Big Ten, joining the conference in 1949. Yet the Spartans were one of the more dominant members, claiming four college football national championships in the 1950s. In his 2014 book, Ray of Light, Author Tom Shanahan describes the Michigan State football program as the underground railroad of college football for its high-level recruitment of black athletes. This was done under the guidance of University President John Hanna, who would become the nation's first civil rights commissioner under President Dwight Eisenhower. And President Hanna could have no better coach to implement this integration than the legendary Duffy Doherty. Coach Doherty established football clinics with black high school football coaches in the South. These clinics taught coaching techniques and game strategy. They were also important in establishing a strong familiarity between Coach Doherty and the Southern high school coaches, which created what college coaches call a pipeline of recruitments of exceptional athletes. Once on his team, Coach Doherty told his players to ignore race or color. The only colors at Michigan State, he said, were green and white. Another major contributor to the integration of sports was the technological advancement of television. As more and more Americans had televisions in their own homes, the popularity of football across America increased. And with that, American audience could see for themselves the racial integration of American sports with such teams as Michigan State, which would help move the populace of the United States in the 1960s towards the acceptance of desegregation and the popularity of civil rights movement. Recruited as a running back, Charlie injured his hamstring in his freshman year, leaving him to fall behind in the running back depth chart. As only the number five fullback in his eligible sophomore year, Charlie was switched over to defensive linebacker. In Tom Shanahan's book, a linebacker went down in practice, and coaches hollered to the sidelines for a new linebacker. Charlie ran onto the field before anyone else responded. Charlie made the tackle on the first play, as well as making the next four tackles with his last sacking the quarterback. That was the beginning of Michigan State's greatest linebacker in school history. With the speed, agility, and vision of a running back, he threaded his way through blockers, and with his ferocity in tackling ball carriers, Charlie earned himself the nickname Mad Dog. In Charlie's third season in 1965, the Michigan State Spartans went undefeated. The season's final game was against Notre Dame in the Irish's home stadium in South Bend, Indiana. Michigan State defeated the Irish 12-3. Mad Dog and the Spartans' dominating defense held Notre Dame to negative 12 yards total offense. Finishing the season 10-0, the Spartans were declared national champions. The following 1966 season saw the Spartans having another successful season going 9-0 with the final regular season game again played against Notre Dame. But this time, the game was in front of their home crowd in Spartan Stadium, East Lansing, Michigan. This game would go down in college sports history as one of the games of the century. 
Both Notre Dame and Michigan State were undefeated and ranked number one and number two, respectively. The winner would be declared national champions. Incredibly, it ended in a 10 to 10 tie, and both schools were declared national champions. Thornhill graduated in the spring of 1967 and was drafted into the American Football League by the Boston Patriots. Unfortunately for Mad Dog, his professional football career ended before it had a chance to get started. He injured himself in the Patriots training camp and couldn't take the field that season. He was subsequently released. After football, Charlie eventually returned and settled down raising a family near where he felt had become his real home of Lansing, Michigan. There he worked for General Motors for 21 years as well as a patrolman for the city of Lansing. In 1993, he became a highly respected and beloved Sergeant of Arms for the Michigan State Senate. As stated in a heartwarming tribute by the Michigan State Senate, Charles Thornhill was a dedicated and respected employee, bringing a warm smile and a kind word to every person he encountered. Over the years, Charlie remained very near and connected in the Michigan State Spartans football. If not in the stands, he could be often invited to the sidelines on game day. Various Spartan coaches through the decades would often ask Charlie to speak with the team to motivate them mentally for an upcoming game. Sadly, Charlie passed away in December of 2006 at the age of 62. In honoring the passing of one of the greatest players, a special memorial service was held at the Michigan State University inside Spartan Stadium. For 13 years, Charlie Thornhill worked underneath the dome of the Michigan State Capitol. Inside the rotunda, where Charlie walked beneath many times, are stars painted in gold and platinum leaf. They represent the infinite possibilities what Michigan can accomplish when we come together as a state. And Charlie Thornhill and the Michigan State Spartans were a shining example of this as the color barriers of college football were broken down.